there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. The last pen video I started on fountain pens and uh, while I made that video I did mention that I was then starting to drill out my blanks with a pillar drill, uh, a very cheap pillar drill and one of the reasons why I'm probably this side of the workshop, uh, this is the pillar drill I bought. So it's the Energer 350 watt drill press um, and it does the job fine. Uh, it was all of £62. Uh, I know you get what you pay for. Uh, there is a little bit of play on the head, especially obviously when it comes down, um, which isn't an issue. The main thing I got it for was it's a lot more accurate than me using the hand drill. So it does make life a lot easier on, on other things. And I have started using it literally all the time on my pen blanks because I find it does a better job than doing it on the lathe. Um, so this week I've had another delivery from Taylor Murfield. So this one here was actually the <coughs> the very first fountain pen I turned. Uh, it's oak with the chrome. It's the Amiga range, which is what these all are. And it was sort of like my my test one. These, I've got to say, are really good quality pens. So like I said, I had a delivery this week from Taylor's Murfield. Not just that, there was a few things. I wanted to carry on with the Amiga range. So what I actually did, I out of the same kits, I ordered the gunmetal, chrome, and I think I've got a gold one still to do. I went for the rollerball. I haven't actually videoed these purely and simply because, as you'll see, they are identical as far as the kits go. The only real difference is just this piece that screws in on the end here to hold the pen, the pen refill, and there is a spring in the end as well. So now the other thing I also had delivered from Taylor's Murfield was this one. Now these are, like I say, the Amiga range and that's sort of like their cheapest um, range that they do on the fountain pen side. So I decided to go for the Alpha range this time and the weird thing is as well is that when I was looking at ordering these, and I, and I don't know whether it's a mistake with the kit or whether because uh, I queried the postage values with them um, that they've put extra in, but you'll notice on here that I actually have the fountain pen and also the rollerball. Now they do a dual kit as well, which I can't remember what it's called. Uh, it's a new rollerball kit, which basically comes with both of those. And I know this certainly isn't one of those because I've checked out all the pictures uh, for the end caps and stuff like that and, and this is definitely the alpha range. So I'm going to record this but what's different about this in actual fact, uh, and, and like I said I don't know whether I'm going to like this pen kit or not, um, purely simply because the this end cap is actually going to be sticking out a lot lot further than that one. On the, on the Amiga range but I don't make all my pen kits for myself just to keep they are to try and sell and gifts and stuff like that and everybody has different tastes and here's the blanks that I've already done and the first thing you'll notice is that both of these are actually the same length so it means that the lid here is going to be the same here so you're going to lose a fair bit of wood off here which is like I say this is the bit that I'm not sure whether I like or not because you're losing the wood to me that looks quite nice that there's there's not too much metal in there and it's got a nice proportion to it so time will tell and as I say it's a case of really when probably put the thing together that I'm really going to have a look at it then so this is Indian Rosewood, which I've only used once before, 
and that was on a I think it was a knob on the top of a of a box. So the next stage is to get these onto the lathe and get started. Now I'm probably not going to video everything because you've seen me in the last pen video turn these down. Um, but what I'm going to probably do, I'm going to probably give a little bit of talking as I go through on certain elements, just to hopefully little tips for what I've found useful for making when I do the pens and which will benefit, certainly benefit somebody who's not turned any before. So my first tip is a very important one as I learnt the lesson um, a while ago when I did a, a batch of pens and they were all out. So the first tip, it doesn't make a difference what type of pen mandrel you've got, you're either going to have one similar to this where the on the tail stock it goes up and pushes onto the actual work this way or you're going to have one that uses effectively like a live centre that goes into the end of your bar. But the important thing here is to make sure that this is all lined up properly uh, because the, the lesson I learned on my uh, my previous fault was on a previous project I was working on I'd had a catch and it actually knocked my headstock out of alignment meaning that this bar was off, off centre this way by about two or three mil. And I, I thought it was a bit strange every time I put the put, put the tail stock up, but didn't really tweak. So the first thing really is, if you just bring your live center up towards the end there, it should obviously be fairly central on this bar. When you tighten this up, initially all you want to do is, especially if it's onto the work like this, you just want to do it so that you can just about turn it around don't really want to do it too tight. Tighten up your tail stock and like I say when you start cutting into this if you find it's it's slipping then you can just do even with it tightened up a little bit on there you can just give it a, a core of a turn on your tail stock and it makes a massive difference. Second tip which is to be honest extremely important when you're dealing with something like pens because they're so small when they're finished with, um, your tolerances are a lot, lot less than obviously working with something like a 10 inch bowl. Tools. I always used to do pens totally with the scoot chisel, which isn't a problem, but I've found, in actual fact, I've got a rough and gouge. It's a cheap one um, from, from my first set of tools I bought. But it's actually a lot quicker and easier for me to quickly take this down to size um, or just to oversize after you've trued it up with this than it is with a skew. And the important thing here, which especially most beginners will not necessarily realise, is to make sure your tools are really, really sharp. It makes a massive difference. So this is all locked down now and I'm just going to quickly bring this down to shape. Uh, so this one is slightly bigger than this one and the idea is what I'll do is I will mainly use the roughing gouge to take these down to a fair size before I then finish them off with the skew. So, so I'll, I won't video all this. So just using the rough and gouge, I've took these down, they're probably about two to three mil at the most away from the bushings. Um, so they're getting very, very close now. So again, my freshly sharpened skew, and again, I've adjusted my tool height up a little bit. I've also brought the tool rest a lot closer because it just gives you that bit of extra support. And again, that height of the tool rest is just gonna be whatever you're comfortable at. Um, as you'll see here, I tend to, when I do small work like this with a skew, I tend to hold my hand down like this. It just gives me a bit more support on the tool control. Um, but again, it's everybody. Right, so we have the shape we want. Um, the next process is the sanding. And I personally, like so it's my own personal choice. I tend to just line all my grits of sandpaper up. I'm going to use, 
and at least that way you're, you've got less chance of missing a grit. It's there, all the hand is quicker. Um, so I usually start off at 150. Now, so you could argue that if you've had a really, really good cut with the skew, you really don't need 150. Now, the reason I use 150 on here is because it just helps refine that last bit of shape, um, especially where, I mean, I'm nice and flush on this bushing all the way round but I can actually feel on this one that the bushing has come off centre a little bit because there's a little plate on the bar. Um, it's a fraction out, but I want to make sure that that's round with the bushing when I've finished. Um, and, and like I say, I can just feel odd little bits. I mean, there is a slight little lump on, on this bit here. So that's why I use the 150. So I usually use 150, 220, um, and I think what's that one that's 240 uh, no it's not 240 that's 320 400 600 and I've got some wet and dry 1200 which I use when I put my finish on uh, so I don't actually use that on the wood itself it's more for when I put my CA finish on which I will run through when I get there so the lathe is now on at slower speed which my lathe only goes to 500 and as I can just say just keep moving gently and you can see on here really where the marks are, where it wasn't obviously totally flat. And it's now taken that down. So that's now where it should be. And like I say, because I've got these slight bulges here, uh, and you always want to then sand along the grain. If you actually look, I mean this camera won't show it, but if you were to actually look closely enough, especially with certain woods, you will actually find that from when I was sanding this way, that it's actually put little scratch marks in there. And it's quite key to make sure that you sand up and down the grain this way. Just gently again, and it will take out all of those little scratch marks so finishing is just as much a personal choice as the wood choice and the style of pen you've got um, one of the most common finishes that I do anyway um, is basically a CA finish uh, I use thin CA glue and like I say it's down to personal choice so the way I do this I usually get a piece of kitchen roll, fold it in half and fold it in half again and I will then usually cut it out into nine little strips like that and then it's just a case of folding it in half again, uh, soaking it with CA glue, having your lathe run on slow and run it across fairly quickly. Uh, obviously being CA glue and it's going on fairly thin it dries fairly quickly but then each coat I do I usually give a blast of the accelerator so that it dries a lot quicker. Uh, well worth getting if you're using the CA finish. Most importantly though is to, before you start this, is to clean everything down. You really don't want bits of dust getting on your work. So basically on with the lathe. Um, I often get paper towels stuck to my finger and people will probably say you should wear gloves but again it's personal preference. A good coating of CA. Quickly down. Paper towel stuck on your finger, put it off, put the last the spray, and you can usually run your finger over straight away. You can feel where you're already getting imperfections. transformed the pen no end and there is a lot of texture there uh, so it has got quite rough so this is where the 1200 grit paper comes in and like I say some people sand to an awful lot higher and just to help it a bit I'll usually use like I say wet and dry paper and again the key is to lightly sand because uh, it will soon take this whole surface off. So it's just gently over. A lot 
lost my over now. So carry on with some more coats of C8. but I'm not finished yet uh, the other thing I do as well is in the UK we have something called tea cut uh, so I don't know whether it's available internationally um, it's basically a like, cutting compound that you use on cars on car paint uh, to restore paintwork so it helps uh, take out all the minor scratches you get on your paintwork um, and it also buffs it so you should just give it a bit of a shake. Just put a reasonable amount on a bit of kitchen roll. And the idea is just to let it just rub in. So I'm just to catch the edge of my pile there, just so it starts going in. Working it in so it's it's a bit like almost a bit like an abrasive paste, uh, something a bit like Yorkshire grit, uh, but this works on paints and polishes. Um, it's it's much much finer. And that's it. A nice, really smooth shiny pen to finish yeah, with. I found as well when you use the CA finish is that often your bushings attached to your pen blank um, do not try and twist them off as if you're unscrewing a cap the best way I've found is is that actually just try and bend them a little bit um, imagine you're snapping a twig and what it does it seems to just break the seal up a lot better so the fi final part, pen assembly. Um, obviously, a lot, of, several people have a pen press, which is absolutely brilliant. It does make probably life a little bit easier, uh, and especially if you are making a lot of pens. However, the lathe is an ideal tool. I just use a, a piece of hardwood, and you can see there that I've used it quite a few times for assembling pens. When you do the slimline pens, the pen nib tends to dig in, which is why I've got the hole there. Um, it's not a problem, I mean it's one little piece of hardwood, quite quick and easy to replace. The other end here on the tailstock I've just basically piece of softwood, just turned something so that it will just sit in there. It's loose, it doesn't fit tight or anything like that. The whole point is you've got a flat surface here so that where it pushes up against the quill and again another hard piece of wood on there and you can see where it's worn over the time. Um, I mean this is probably put together. 50 or so pens just to make life a lot easier. Uh, tie the tail stock down and you're ready to go. It is well lined up with your tube uh, when you put it on because if it is at an angle um, it will properly wreck the tube. So put it together gentle but firmly and goes in. Same for the other end, again this has a, a little tube, that, uh, a little part that goes on the tube as well. Make sure that they're lined up well. That's the first part. Now if you're doing something like a fountain pen, the, the key part that I've found here is that because you want to line your grain up as best you can, and I've got to find out where we are here, it's going to be there. So 
So I've got this nice dark patch here, which runs right down there. I need to make sure that that's there when the lid is closed. So the idea is usually just insert part into the top there. Tighten down your pen as if the lid is closed fully. And then you can then usually spin this around a bit further. I have to come out again a bit. Uh, find out where that part is that you need to line the grain up. Push them in. Make sure that that is still nice and tight. Keep hold of this lid section very tightly so that you can then take off this end. At least this way, this should all now be fully lined up, which could be my famous last words for when we put the lid on. And if I put that lid on now with a bit of luck, I am not far out at all, um, a very, very small fraction. Now, a lot of the pens, and this goes even for things like the slimline pens and stuff like that, often come with a fixed clip um, onto the cap, um, unlike this one, which spins separately. So again, you have to make sure that you're putting it on there straight away first time. Whereas this one, because the the clip is loose from the cap, you can actually put it on there fairly loosely to start with and then decide where you want to put it. So I'm going to decide that where I want my grain, which is roughly about there, for my clip. And then just make sure that it goes in nice and firm. It's lined up where I want it. And other than putting the fountain pen part in, That is my first Taylor Murfield Alpha Pen created. Right, so that's the Taylor Murfield Alpha Pen completed. Uh, do I like it? I've got to say I'm very, very impressed. It looks a far better um, now seeing it in the hand than it does on the pictures on their website. Uh, I think that their website could do with a a little bit of an upgrade to get some more of the pictures on there um, some better pictures because they really do not sell the pens so well as they are compare it to the Amiga pen that I turned last this is the Amiga gunmetal now I'll pronounce this probably wrong this is the rhodium and black alpha pen but I think it looks absolutely wonderful um, again the same sort of quality you get with the Amiga pens the thread is absolutely lovely on there uh, both ways so the Alpha range has this it's more decoration the end, uh, uh, on the lid there there's more decoration there the around the actual bottom of the lid on the, was on the cap there um, on the centre band there is, is a bit more decorative um, and yeah, I think that this colour, it's very, very similar to the gunmetal. The kit came with the actual extra bits for the roller ball. Now, like I said, that may well not be standard when you order these. Now, I've got one more of these to do. I think it's um, something like golden chrome or something like a mixture of that anyway. Um, so I will do that. But I think next time I order something from Taylor Murf Taylor's Murfield will be... they've brought something out fairly recently which is another new one called the Sigma Duel and that does actually come with the conversion kit for sure like that. Now it's a great idea having the conversion kit but practicality wise um, if I was to have this say like out on a work environment or something like that carrying all those bits around um, especially with the spring uh, I've found as well when I did the rollerball in these is that the spring sits loosely in the top here. Uh, so the moment you take anything out, the string the spring drops out. So obviously if you ran out of ink with this, with your fountain pen, how likely are you really to then go and 
swap over to this. I think to have those as a dual pen like that, you really then need to sell them probably with some form of a presentation box which holds the parts that are not being used. So if this is your first time here, uh, please do subscribe. I do regular videos. It's usually a new video every Sunday morning uh, that comes on the channel. If you subscribe, at least you'll get notified every time I, I upload a video. For my existing subscribers, again, a big, big thank you as always for keep coming back. You watching is so, so most appreciated. I would appreciate it if everybody could hit the share button, hit the like button, and please leave some comments below. Um, perhaps you've done the some of the Taylor Murfield pens and let us know your thoughts. Perhaps you're thinking of buying some um, and this has helped you. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on the next project video. Thanks a lot. Bye.